Hi, it's Karen, and welcome or welcome back to All About That Fringe. Um, yeah, I've got my C collar on today. It's funny, a couple of days ago, I made this cute little video, well, at least I th thought it was cute, about my very short visit to Whole Foods. And it's interesting because um, I had to go to the pharmacy to pick up a prescription. I went to the drive through and then I didn't have anything here for Easter Sunday, like at all for food. And I decided that um, I should get something. Um, and so I made a little video about getting a slice of pizza. And then I picked up just a couple things really quick and came home. And then I wound up with severe neck pain, migraines, it has not been a good couple of days. And honestly, I was in the store for 15 minutes. Um, this is starting to get to be more than I can do. And, um, and that's a hard, that's a hard pill for me to swallow. Um, it's hard for me to realize that um, it feels like the disease is winning, you know? Um, and I know so many of you understand what that feels like. So um, why am I on today? Because I was just on a call and um, I wanted to show you what's happened here. This, <laughs> believe it or not, is Columbia by Beltress in Sumptuous Strawberry. And she is now straightened. Um, I still want to give her a conditioning and um, I want to you know, wash her and whatever, just again, after she's been straightened. But she, I don't know, she's feeling pretty good. And I bought myself a grown up girl flat iron. Because when I first tried to flat iron her, I was doing it with my little travel iron, which is like this big. And it took me for freaking ever. And my hands were all cramped up because like my hands don't usually work that well in the first place. And it's funny because here I am using like the correct product, like the correct device. And it took no time at all to get, to go through the whole thing and get her smoothed down. Um, the first time I tried to straighten her, I used the HD spray. And this time I just used spritzes of water because I didn't want to put more HD spray on and get her gunky or anything. Um, but I know that a lot of people just use the spritzes of water. Make sure you use something. The other thing about this one is it's got can you see that little temperature things? And so you wanna keep your heat on low, even though it's a heat to fire and a heat friendly um, piece. But I kept mine at 285 and I was able to get the whole thing done like in no time. I think it came out really cute, like so cute, love it. Um, and I didn't love her before, um, bought her from a wig sister, sorry, Anna. Um, and, and, and she just kind of looked a little bit of a mess. And if you haven't seen that picture, I'll post a link in the comment, um, my little comment block below, so that you can see what she looked like before. Um, it just the curl pattern on certain pieces of helper hair just do not work for me. And that was one of those situations. But I love her now. She's so beautiful. Um, anyway, um, just wanted to kind of give you a show on her. She's got a pretty nice part. She's got a pretty nice lace front. I think she's just a little funky on the nutting just right around here. And if I really wanted to, I might do a little pluck here or there. Probably not going to bother if I'm being honest. Um, I think that was harder to see when it was curly and not straight. Um, but again, there's this thing in psychology in my field. And um, there's a theorist and his name is D.W. Winnicott. And Winnicott came along during the time that a lot of people were sort of moving away from the like Freudian, Jungian psychoanalysis sort of stuff and looking at things like human development and how that impacts um, you know, personality and the psyche and mental health and things like that. And most of the people who came on the scene then were women studying development and they were studying mothering um, and the effect of, you know, how the mother's interaction with the infant impacted the infant's security and attachment and all of those good kinds of things. And so Winnicott came along and um, created this concept of the good enough mother. And, and what it was is that in order to be a good mother, if you will, um, because all this focus was on mothering. And a lot of these other theories were kind of, I don't know, 
in my opinion, sort of critical to women. And you know what? I think most women work hard enough to try and be good parents and good moms and stuff like that, that we don't need somebody else coming down and saying, hey, you know, you're the reason your kid's messed up. But anyway, D.W. Winnicott came up with this theory, good enough mother. And the way that it works is that to be a good enough mother, you don't want to be a perfectionist. You don't want to force your kids to be perfect all the time. You want them to learn that they can and that you do make mistakes, that, you know, life happens. And what happens when things don't go perfectly is that you adjust, you make amends, you let your kids see that you screw up and then you say, I'm sorry, that's not what I wish I had done. Here, let me let me make a repair here. Let me fix that. Let me do something differently. Um, and so, you know, it's different from sort of falling on your sword. It's it's sort of just like a, you know, a humble correction, if you will. And that that's a really healthy thing for kids to see because then they realize that they don't have to be perfect to be loved, that if they make a mistake, they can make it right and be loved. And they don't have to, you know, maybe go to the other extreme where they don't even bother being a good person because nothing they do is good enough. So, so Winnicott's term, good enough mother, has, has really kind of stuck with me for a long time because um, when I was in grad school, you know, we used to joke around about Winnicott. It's like, what's for dinner? Winnicott chicken. Um, because nobody had time to cook in grad school. And the concept really applies now too. And I wonder if this applies for you in a lot of ways. Like, are there some, you can hear Baloo tick, tick, ticking in the background. I'm sorry, but I don't know what he's just decided he's going to go look for, but his little feet are tick, tick, ticky. Um, he always seems to be making an appearance lately in some strange way. He's such a cute guy. Um, anyway, about this. So I could obsess over this lace front and say, you know what? I really want to do something with that front a little bit. And who knows? Maybe I will. But for right now, I'm just really excited and like what it looks like straightened. I think this is a cute piece on me. I like the color. I like the style. I actually just trimmed the ends just a little bit so that the parts that were kind of like frizzy and whatever were gone. Um, and I like her. And it's comfortable and it's awesome. And I think she's going to get some use now, whereas before that wasn't going to be the case. Um, so I don't know. Is there a lesson in there? I guess there are a bunch of lessons I'm trying to throw out there. Here, here's some lessons. Take whatever sticks for you. Use it for yourself. Um, like a little fairy sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkling lessons for you. <laughs> um, it's been a tough couple of days. I've been in an incredible amount of pain. And um, and so I guess I just wanted to say, here I am, I'm still in a lot of pain, but I'm able to sit up even with a collar. I do what I need to do, say hello, um, show you how my Columbia looks. And um, let me just tell you a little bit about her. Should I take her off? Let's do that. Um, so, hi. So um, she has got a lace front, as we were just discussing. Um, and she has a lace side part um, and she's left part, which I am. Um, it's not a tremendously wide part, but there's enough for you to kind of move over a little bit if you need to. And I kind of keep my, my little lace thing here to kind of get that there. Um, she's got little velvet on her ear tabs. There's not a lot of wire in here. It's actually, um, a relatively low density ear tab, which is nice because I find sometimes I get a little bit too much going on over the ear. She does not have an extended nape. It's, it's, it, well, if you want to call that extended, it's, it's like a thicker nape, but it's not really extended. Um, yeah, I don't know. We could argue back and forth about what that is, I think. Um, I'm not an expert. I'm just telling you what I see. And so it just feels like most of my extended nape ones are a lot bigger. And what I like about those is I can pull them over the back of my wig grip and they just kind of hug on a little bit there. Um, and then she's open wefted all around. So she's gonna be nice and cool. Um, and like most bell truss, there's like 
zero to no permatease in here. There's just a little bit of just a little bit of feel there just to kind of hold the style um, in the top of the cap, but yeah, I'm nothing. Just the hair is pretty much what I feel. Um, and what else can I tell you about her now that I've actually got her off? Oh, um, her adjusters are the strap, the bra strap adjusters that you can pull through. Um, those are okay, except they do this. See that? They get the little curly thing. So once you get it where you want it, um, I don't know. It's like you want to be careful not to cut those off. But I found something really cool. There are these little Velcro tabs. And um, I bought this big old box of it. It comes as big long strip because I was going to use it to fold up the bottom of my ostomy bags so they didn't dangle down too low because I'm kind of short and they're kind of long. Anyway, um, I was thinking that those could be rigged up, like a little tiny Velcro thing there could be rigged up and um, that it could kind of keep those strappy things out of the way and not having to like cut them and then regret that you cut them or if you decide that you want to share that piece with somebody else eventually that they can get a good fit out of it too. I'm going to put it back on. Um, hold on one second. There we go. It's a little harder to do with a collar. The collar is absolutely in the way. There we go. I'm taking that off for a few minutes. It'll be okay. And I'm gonna adjust. And I don't have my water bottle here, but I do have my trusty comb. All right. So while I've got your attention, before I say goodbye today, um, I want to say thank you for joining All About That French. Thanks for joining our main page. Um, thanks for those of you who've done a little bit of work in the background on the admin team. Admin. I'm going to keep working until I can say that darn word. Admin team. Um, thank you to all of you who have, you know, so generously shared what we're doing with other people so that they can benefit from it too. Um, our intention as we go forward is to create a safe, communal space, um, but not to necessarily duplicate what everybody else is doing. We wanna maybe amplify what good people are doing. Um, and so we'll point you in the direction of some of the good outreaches that are there, give you some good places to maybe donate things to that you're no longer wearing. And um, I know I'm fussing here, but I would like her to, at least for my final goodbye to you, be sitting where I would like her to be. We'll just adjust that a little bit there. Yeah, there we go. I think we're good now. Um, anyway, you know what? These videos, you like get to see what ADD, adult ADD looks like in motion. Cause I'm like, oh, squirrel, oh, comb. Oh, let's talk about this. Um, the page is, um, is going to do some stuff. Um, not huge ambition stuff, just um, stuff from the heart stuff. And um, we're going to point you in direction of a couple of places. But I wanted to tell you about one little initiative before I go today. Um, a friend of mine slash wig sister slash person in our group had said this um, last night and or this morning. And I want to say it to all of you. You would not donate your clothes, or at least I hope not, to like savers or, you know, someplace that you might be giving your stuff to. Um, there are some places where I wouldn't give my stuff to, but I'm going to get all political on you. So let and I just talk about hair. You would not donate your clothing, I hope, without washing it first. Please do not donate your wigs without washing them first. That's gross. I understand that some of you aren't well enough to do that. You get a pass. Although maybe you could ask like a family member or a friend or another fellow wig sister, wig pal, um, let's stay gender, gender neutral there to help you out. But like wash them because a lot of times what happens is the outreaches spend all their time and money and resources um, and human resources and their daily spoon allowance of energy washing a wig and another wig, and another wig, and another wig, um, with the intention of making those available for you to purchase as part of a fundraiser or to wear um, as a gift um, from that outreach. And so let's try and all do our part, okay? 
um, will 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 I don't know come up with a nice little hashtag or something. Um, wash that darn wig. Um, but let's let's try and just like be mindful of stuff like that. Okay. Thank you. Did you subscribe? Did you subscribe to my YouTube channel? Hit the subscribe button, please. I know that we could get more subscribers and I hope that you'll share this with other people as well. Take care, everybody. See you next time.